How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Oh, thank you for having me on. You're on. Uh, I have to say thank you for this. No, <laughs> not at all. My pleasure. My pleasure. Do you speak Serbian? No. I tell you why. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because my father spoke a little bit when he uh, grew up in Wollongong, which is south of Sydney. But then afterwards, uh, he decided that he just wanted to be, you know, my grandfather also decided, you're growing up in Australia, we want you just to, to speak Australia, um, you know, English. And so he wanted them to concentrate on that, even though they did a little bit of it at home. So it kind of skipped a generation because we weren't then living with our grandparents either, we were in a different state. So it kind of slipped away and all we knew were swear words. So I know a lot of, I know a lot of Serbian swear words, which come in very handy because no one knows what they are, except me and fellow Serbs. And gee, they swear well, don't they? Oh, oh, the best. Very much. Very much. The best and swearers. In the world. <laughs> in the I, world. I would say that. I know. <laughs> OK, uh, I do regret sometimes that you don't speak. Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. I think, um, I think all children, if they've got access to uh, you know, another language, especially if their parents or grandparents or they have lineage, um, sh should be able to speak that language. And uh, obviously, I didn't have anything to do with it, but Dad decided. I think there were different times as well. I think you know, it wasn't so great when after the Second World War, um, you know, f uh, from, from their perspective, to be considered an outsider. They were trying to integrate, um, whereas now it's very accepted. Um, so, yeah, I think I, I do regret it a little bit. Um, my grandmother was German as well, so I speak a little bit of German, and I've got the Serbian swear words, um, and also I speak um, a little bit of Spanish. So, <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm all over the place. Uh, but, yeah, I think it would have been nice, but, you know, what can you do? OK, we will, <laughs> we will, we will make uh, this interview then in English. Thank you. Um, what was the main story this morning? So this morning uh, we were covering the, the missing plane, the Malaysian Airlines plane, um, that uh, that has gone down somewhere. I think um, in the ocean. We're not we're not we're not quite sure at this point. So I mean, as a breakfast team, we've got there are six Australians on board that plane. So there's there's a, a tremendous interest in what might have happened, but also there's greater interest in that story because everyone flies, or most people fly. Um, and they want to know what happened, how it's possible that a plane could just disappear from a radar in the modern world, um, you know, when you know where everyone is at every time, um, suddenly this plane's just disappeared. And so that's, that was just one of the stories we were covering. I think breakfast television, we cover a lot of hard news, but also uh, lighter news. So on, the, on that story, we, we crossed the reporters in Kuala Lumpur, um, and you know, the next break we had, we had Naomi Watts, uh, the Australian actress. So, like, it, it's it's a rich tapestry breakfast it television. Is, it is a mix. Actually. It is, yeah. News yeah. entertainment. I like that mix too. I mean, I, I come from a I come from a news background. I was a correspondent in Los Angeles um, for Channel Nine Australia, and so I love covering big events as well as um, a little bit of celebrity here and there. It's it's fun. Uh, do you probably uh, probably already knows what? What uh, you will be preparing for tomorrow? Uh, some of the things, yes. Um, so we know tomorrow um, I've got an interview with Katy Perry, the singer. Um, so we will, um, we will be discussing that tomorrow and the report will be going to air tomorrow. Um, there's also um, lots of news around in Australia that, that we, we can plan for. Um, some of the stuff we, we can't plan for, um, you know, it happens overnight um, and so you leave big gaps in our, in our show for the things that happen overnight and that's the most important thing about breakfast television, I think. When people wake up, you tell them what's been going on, whether that's overseas or in your own country. You already mentioned uh, partly your family. Yes. But uh, I will say something more, maybe uh, if I made some mistake, just correct sure. okay? Uh, so your grandfather, mm -hmm. Dragic Stefanovic, mm -hmm. uh, was a Serbian prisoner in Germany. He was. And uh, during the World War II, mm -hmm. and uh, love was born mm. actually between him yes. and his boss. Uh, My grandma. Lady, yeah. your yes. grandma, yeah. Elizabeth. And after the war they decided to come to Australia. Yes. Uh, your father, Alex, mm -hmm. is it his name, Alexander or Alexander? Yeah. Alexander uh, married your mom, mm -hmm. Jenny, mm -hmm. here in Sydney. Mm -hmm. But uh, also, you were born in Dalihars. Yes. Sydney. Yes. Yeah. Uh, then uh, your family moved to Queensland. Yes. You finished uh, the study there. Yeah. 
journalism. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Very good. But so thank you. <laughs> but uh, that means you wrote our. Uh, Serbian, what is your connection with Serbia? Is Ser uh, Serbia, Serbian people here? Yes, yeah, so when we, it's a, it was a great story first of all. Um, you know, my grandfather was a prisoner of war for, for a number of years uh, in Germany. And when the war finished, he couldn't really stay in Germany because, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, an obvious thing for anyone to do to fall in love with the former enemy. Um, and. So they couldn't stay in Germany because there was still that, um, you know, that reticence on, on the behalf of Germans to accept that, that he was, you know, living there. And also, he, they couldn't go back to Serbia because she was German. And so I, I think they felt that pressure. So what they decided to do was to move to Australia. So they, they, they got on a ship and they came out to Australia. And my grandfather was very smart. Like he knew seven or eight languages, um, which a lot of Serbians do, obviously. But he was, um, he was a mechanical engineer and worked for BHP, still works. Um, and then um, I remember during those time when we were, we'd go visit them, we, were, we would go to some of the Serbian community halls and um, you know, he'd do singing. We, we always celebrated um, the Serbian Easter uh, and Serbian Christmas. Um, so it was that Orthodox faith and yes. you know, it was um, uh, Slava. Slava, yeah. yeah. So we, 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 I remember celebrating those. And we had an appreciation for it, but we also had uh, we also celebrated um, inside the German halls, and we would go to do German singing, and so it was a very multicultural upbringing for me. But I think slightly unusual because of the German Serbian heritage; it's kind of the mix. And on Mum's side, it's sh um, my grandfather was British, um, and he came out here after the Second World War as well. Um, so it's this great patchwork quilt of DNA, weird DNA pulsating through my veins. This is the picture of uh, um, made yes. Australia. Yes, <laughs> it is. I get a lot of letters from the Serbian community um, and, and some, some priests as well. Um, they just they send me letters from now, now and then, um, which, which I enjoy reading. And um, I get calls every now and then from you know, people who knew my dad when they, when they were growing up saying, can we can, I, can you give me your father's number so we can reconnect? Um, there's a lot of uh, Stefanovic's or Stefanovic's around too. And a lot of people say, do you know the so-and-so Stefanovic's or the, the, the Stefanovic's? And I was like, no, we're not really familiar with them. <laughs> so it's, we get a lot of calls about that. You know, it's, I think it's, it used to be, I, I, I remember looking at phone books when I was a kid, and they used to only be about five um, in Australia, and now there's, there are lots. Um, so. You know, I, I, I'm very proud of, of the heritage. Um, we, look, we don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot to do with um, with the Serbian community in, in per se, but but I'm very immensely proud of, of um, the heritage and where the name came from, where my grandfather came from, and um, I think it's it's one of the great stories of, of modern Australia too. You know, that we're made up of all these different countries, and yeah, it's good. You mentioned your father; he was a musician. Yeah? Yes. And your mother said once uh, time that uh, she was actually renting a TV yeah. set yeah. that you can watch TV and introduce the, the magical pictures. Yeah, um, from a very young age uh, I was always in, really loved television. Um, my dad was a, was a singer in a band um, during the 60s uh, and a very successful band in Sydney. They had a top ten hit, and they met um, at one of the beaches up here when he was playing, and she was a waitress, and they got together. But I think that 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 shot and uh, that's the road uh, to the best host and presenter in, <laughs> TV, in Australia. You're, is, is you're very fact. charming. You're very charming. <laughs> so, this is a fact, actually. <laughs> Um, yeah, look, oh, that was very humbling. That was very humbling. And you know, when I got those awards, um, and I didn't expect to get them, I, you know, and, but when I did, I, really, I did think about my grandfather and thought, within this short amount of time of him coming out to Australia and starting a new life, he's had a son, his son's had a son, and then this has happened. And it was, it was a very proud moment, I think, um, looking back on it, um, when you consider you know, what was with the kiss of Robbie Williams? Well, Robbie Williams had a... Did you plan this? I did not plan it. So there are some things I plan to ask people, but never the kiss. And so 
you know, you're a, um, you know, a man with Serbian heritage, we kiss each other on the cheek, but not on the lips. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I would kiss you on the cheek, but not, you know, with the moustache <laughs> and everything. <laughs> would get itchy. I didn't expect, I did not expect to, uh, to see him. Uh, he, yeah. he I wouldn't do it again, though. He kissed me. <laughs> he, kissed he grabbed my head and kissed me. It was very aggressive. <laughs> but fun. Uh, I, I, I don't know whether I'll do it again, but it was fun for the moment. To be successful, actually, you have to know a lot of things. Also, the languages of cat. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, so, um, yes, the cat. I, I've always been able to um, to communicate with um, cats. No one knows. <laughs> and the cat knows exactly what I'm saying, and um, and, the, and the cat is is cognizant of, of the Australian accent, and um, completely ignored me. However, I always think it's better to be nice to animals of all kinds. Your brothers are, are also in the yes. industry, in TV industry, and also in Channel 9. Mm. Uh, we had is, a, it, is it a nepotism? <laughs> I think with it, they got a three for one deal at Channel 9. <laughs> so they pay for they pay for one for, and you get three. It's like going to McDonald's and getting you know a happy meal. Um, but the boys are the, uh, my brother's a correspondent in London, Peter, and my youngest brother Tom is a cameraman. So I think what happened was they saw me go into the business. They saw what it was like. They saw, they thought how fun that would be to be doing something different every day. Uh, are you thinking about your future? You are now co-host in uh, Channel 9, the yes. breakfast uh, show today, but what is the next? I think um, it's, it's a great job what I'm doing, you know, so I get the privilege of, of doing breakfast television. When people wake up and they see things for the first time, and I think with that becomes comes enormous responsibility in, in what you do. Yes, there's fun, and we have lots of jokes, and um, you know I love doing that. That's the uh, side of my personality. There's also serious stuff, so I think that I'll probably continue doing this uh, for some time, however long they they want me to do it, um, and combine that with 60 Minutes, which is a current affairs show in Australia. Um, I'll, I'll combine those two. Are you uh, improvise something? Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. I think you've got to, and I think the better the improvising, um, a lot of people say you've got to actually rehearse impro, impro which is odd, um, and sometimes it does work well, but I think the best things are the ones that just pop into my head sometimes and you go with it. And that, I think that takes, you know, it takes a bit of experience to know when to do it and when not to do it. Sometimes I get it completely wrong, um, but other times that's what's the, 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 you know, the beauty about live TV, it just works. Um, and, and you've just got to have the courage to go for it and not worry about what people think. Like we had spiders on the show last week, uh, um, uh, these big uh, funnel web spiders. Yeah. And we get funnel webs in Australia. Um, I'm not sure whether you get them in, in Serbia, probably not, but these big spiders with fangs, terrible things. And so I got a, um, a, a can of fly spray, an insect spray, and sprayed it all over it. Killed them all. Um, so they weren't very happy with me. But I don't like insects. You know, I don't, my grandfather didn't like them, I don't like them. No. I won't tell you what my grandfather did with insects. I don't know the people he may have shot them. <laughs> I don't know the people which like spiders. Or he wouldn't think twice about it. <laughs> like a cowboy. Huh? That's it, bang! <laughs> Let's fix the problem, bang. Huh? Yeah, 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 bang. Yeah. Is there in the world any person you would like to interview? It's a good question. Um, I think uh, uh, I think I'd like to interview Barack Obama, the American president. I think that'd be it'd be great to interview an American president. I think. Can we improvise now? Sorry. Yes. Can we? It's not a sexual thing, is it? <laughs> Can we? No, no, I'm not. not it's not the Robbie Williams. <laughs> You're getting your moustache ready. <laughs> this is getting weird. <laughs> but I'm not Barack Obama too. Yeah. So, uh, can we improvise uh, to show to our viewers how Karl Stefanovic is doing his job? Yes. Can you imagine the time some person you want to interview? Yes. And we can make very brief yes. interview. Yes. So, yes. just changing the role. Okay. Please. <coughs> you are more. You want me to go? I'll go first? Yeah. Uh, welcome back to uh, Serbian Television Breakfast News. Um, we were about to talk um, 
with Robbie Williams, uh, who is a, um, a very big uh, international singing sensation from Great Britain. Robbie, good morning to you. Good morning. It is lovely to see you, Robbie. You're looking very handsome. You've uh, got a moustache now. Yeah, uh, but it is not real moustache. A fake moustache? Yeah, no, but not. <laughs> it looks very real to me, Robbie. And you have a new song coming out. Just sing a little bit of it for me. Yeah, uh, the name of the song is... Is that your phone? No, it who is, is my phone. I guess. Hang on, who is that? Oh, is my, it your, is it my your producer. Do you want me to get that? No, 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 I'm pro my producer. I will Robbie? hit him later. You'll hit him later? Maybe. Robbie. Maybe. Is it your wife? Maybe. Don't be so indiscreet. Come on. Don't tell me what to do, Robbie. I'm interviewing you. Okay, okay. Okay, so how does the every song question, go? Every question. How does the song go? It's new. It's a new song. Yeah, new song. And to it all, she offers me protection, a lot of love and affection. <laughs> you know already. Who is no, that? Again. Again. This is very bad. It's unprofessional. Are yeah, you having trouble? Are you having trouble with um, Australian immigration at the moment, Robbie? That we should know about? No, no. But but there is actually one issue. Yes. One issue because I wanted to. To uh, bring my uh, sm small dog, yes, small dog Chihuahua. Uh, oh yeah, Chihuahua. And they wanted passport for for that dog, and I didn't. A passport for your dog, Chihuahua. Dog. You know this is uh, this is your country. Uh, yes. Immigration. Yeah, long to a long time in quarantine. Awful dogs. You know, you're lucky you didn't bring it because we shoot them here. Little dogs. You get a big dog in Alsatian. Uh, Carl, do, would you like to say to me thank you? Thank you so much for joining us. Thank it's been you. wonderful to see you and have a wonderful tour. <laughs> thank you. I'm not thank kissing you. <laughs> it was Karl Stefanovic, najbolji i najpopularniji voditelj na australijskoj televiziji, trenutno domaćin jutarnjeg programa na kanalu 9. Thank you, my friend. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.